We begin with that private funeral for one of those officers killed in El Monte. Yeah, the private funeral service for fallen El Monte police officer Joseph Santana, his fellow officer Sergeant Michael Paredes, were killed in the line of duty two weeks ago. As reported, Santana's killer, Justin Flores, both of those officers' killer, Justin Flores, was on probation the night he shot and killed Santana and another El Monte police officer. But new reporting from the LA Times says Flores' probation officer had not seen him in person in more than six months. And according to the Times, probation department, the department itself, received several reports about Flores breaking probation rules, including possession of a gun and beating a woman. Woman. The paper also reports Flores' own mom called his probation officer just days before the deadly shooting to report he was using drugs. As we reported before, George Gascon chose to give Flores probation because he considered him nonviolent. Let's bring in a prosecutor who's pretty high up in the DA's office, Jonathan Hatami, who's been pretty vocal about his opposition to many of George Gascon's policies, his boss. Um, what do you make of, of what happened here? Should Flores have been behind bars? He definitely should have been behind bars. Uh, everybody needs to realize that the sole reason or the only reason that the murderer of Michael and Joseph was on probation to begin with is George Gascon. And George is really gaslighting, I think, everybody. We all need to realize that this individual had a strike prior. And George removed the strike prior without considering his record. George didn't look at his past. George didn't look at his prior criminal record. We had a blanket policy that he implemented that removed strikes on every single case, including this case. We sued him twice. And both times, courts, the court said what he did was wrong and unethical. But in this specific case, in Michael and Joseph's case, he removed the strike without even looking at this murderer's record. And then the record is very, very clear. In 2009, he, he, violate, he committed a felony. He violated probation. He went to prison. In 2011, he committed a felony. He was on probation. He violated probation. He rent, went to prison. He was on parole to 2016. He committed about 10 misdemeanors in a 10-year period, including resisting arrest, including criminal threats, including fraud. Uh, and in 2020, he was arrested with a gun, he was arrested with methamphetamine and he was arrested with ammunition and he was a known and admitted gang member. So this individual should never have been put on probation. He wasn't a good candidate for probation. He had failed probation numerous times and any good DA would notice that. And so I consider the sole reason that this individual is out on probation is George Gascon and his really, really horrible, bad and dangerous policies. Well, he has defended uh, his policies through and through. We have invited him onto the show, as Alex points out. Alex has been, has been a part of Special Report since its conception, uh, what, more than two years ago. Gascona has denied all of the invitations to be on this program. Today, he was out there. He held a press conference. He didn't talk about this, but he talked about the rise in hate crimes. Let's take a listen. We know that unless we all work together and fight back, we will all be targeted at one time or another. So he was out there today uh, to announce a countywide initiative to uh, combat the rise in hate crimes. Uh, of course, he didn't bring up this case regarding Justin Flores, Jonathan. But do you think, though, that this is a good move for him and, his, and the the DA's office in terms of hate crimes? I mean, first off, I would like for him to show some empathy to Michael and Joseph. These individuals were fathers, they were husbands, they were police officers, they were good men. Uh, they were members of the El Monte community, our community. And I didn't see at any point George Gaston showing some empathy for what happened and apologizing for what happened. As far as hate crimes go, my first statement would be, he says he wants to work together with everybody. He refuses to collaborate with anybody. He won't collaborate with his own prosecutors who actually work for him. He won't collaborate with law enforcement. He won't collaborate with anybody who disagrees with him. And I would ask him this question. On day one, George Gascon removed all hate crimes. How could an individual who is a 30-year veteran in the police department and an eight-year veteran as a DA in San Francisco how dare that individual come to Los Angeles 
And the first thing he does, day one, is remove all hate crimes. He, to me, he's just a disgrace. Um, that is just unfair for the people of Los Angeles. It's not something any district attorney should do here in Los Angeles. Vulnerable victims need to know that they're protected, and the people in this community need to know that if you prey on an individual regarding hate, you're going to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. A um, couple quick hits. Uh, so the, the recall, um, people have until July 6th to sign the petition for the recall. They want to have a bunch of extra signatures in case some of these signatures are not verified. If the recall goes on to the ballot, um, are you, Jonathan Hatami, going to run to replace George Gascon? I think first, and, and thank you for asking me that question, but I think the only thing I'm running for now or running after is my kids. Um, that, that pretty much is my sole um, uh, importance, is my children and my family. Um, I'll, I'll consider that when the time comes. I, I, I would like the recall to first be successful before we start talking about people running for that position. And I'll tell you this, that 99% of the people in Los Angeles would be a better district attorney than George Gascon. Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Uh, so, <laughs> and, and uh, in terms of um, one more thing, because you talked about him working with other people. How much have you worked with him? Because there's a lot of people that are listening to this and be like, I couldn't go on TV and talk about my boss like this. You're one of the most high profile prosecutors in, in the entire office. You've been there for a long time. How much are you guys interacting? Zero. Um, I, 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 he's been there 18 months. Uh, in 18 months, I've seen him one time in the parking lot. Uh, he's never come to my office. He's never called me. He's never talked to me about any of the high profile cases I handle any of the child murder cases that I handle, uh, never once seemed to care about my cases. Um, the only th thing he cared about doing is removing strikes and allegations on, on cases where children were tortured and murdered, and pretty much I refused to do that. But I've never once talked to him. He's never once talked to me. He's never once asked me about my cases. He's never once come down to my office and, and talked to me about my cases during the 18 months he's been there. And you said that that was, it's 100% different uh, than the previous, your relationship with the previous district attorney as well. Jonathan, uh, Tommy, we, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much. I'd be curious to see one time if you went and knocked on his door, how that would go. Please bring a camera because we'd love to watch it. <laughs> I will definitely do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, Jonathan, Tommy, thank you so much.